Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. How are you? It's a lovely day. It's a lovely sunny day. I've got the feeling that we're, uh, we're over the worst of the bad weather. Not over the worst of the rain, but certainly over the worst of the, the cold, you know, and everything. It's, <coughs> it's not exactly a spring-like effect in the air. Because you can tell, can't you? I don't know, I can. You know, you can tell the first day of autumn, can't you? You can tell the first day of spring just by sort of sniffing. You don't have to go out to the field and drop your trousers and sit on the earth, which is the old fashioned way of doing it. Anyway, uh, I've got a quiet day today. Actually, it's a bit quieter than it was because something happened last night. It was something completely stupid. <laughs> now, last night was pancake night wasn't it so there I was we'd had a busy day Tuesday's our day the hygienist is in so the surgery's rocking at full capacity pretty much and uh, I get home oh, get out I'm sorry about the visual quality of these things but really as I've said in the past you don't tune in to look at me and uh, yeah, so it's about half past five and the phone rings and it's uh, some sort of commercial service. It was a limousine service or something. So the bloke said, hello, uh, is that first impressions? I said, yes, yeah. who's calling? He says, oh, hello. He says, who's that? <laughs> so, like, we, we don't get many cold calls, you know, but we do get, uh, occasionally we get just businesses ringing up saying, oh, can I speak to the financial director or whatever, you know. So I said, it's first impressions, how can I help? He says, Derek, is that Derek, is that Derek? I said, you've come through on the emergency dental line. I said, is it, have you got an emergency? He says, do you know what? He says, I don't like your attitude. And he hung up. So, I know nothing about this bloke. He wouldn't tell me on the phone who he was. And I do think it's incumbent, if you're ringing someone, to identify yourself. I do think that if someone, if you ring someone and you say, you know, and you know who you're ringing, I mean, you've got the advantage over the person who's being rung, haven't you? You know, you know who you are and you know who you're ringing. <coughs> they only know who they are, they don't know who's ringing them. So I think, I do think it's incumbent upon you to identify yourself when you're ringing and, and state the nature of the medical emergency. <laughs> so anyway, but this bloke wouldn't tell me anything, he wouldn't tell me, and the more I said, look, I'm sorry, what, who's, who's calling, the less he wanted to tell me. So in the end, he just hung up, which I think was rude anyway. So, because I mean, I think he, he knew who he was talking to. I mean, he knew who he was talking to. So uh, anyway, then uh, we get an email saying, uh, uh, please cancel my appointments tomorrow. I, uh, uh, you know, because I've just rung up, someone's been rude to me down the phone and therefore I wish to cancel my appointments. So that's fine. That's the only thing he can do really is cancel his appointments. And to be honest, he's, you know, talking about cutting off your nose to spite your face. It's an overreaction and, uh, and a stupid thing to do. And it means more to him than it means to us. For us, it means one less patient. For him, it means one new dentist, which I, I think is a larger inconvenience. But um, but anyway, uh, you know, he was like, you know, I've just spoken to someone. I think it was Derek. He was very rude to me on the phone, uh, and so uh, I, you know, I don't wish to. You, I do not wish to avail myself of your service any further. So. Um, I, uh, my uh, receptionist gets the practice emails out of ours on her phone so she forwarded it to me and said look you know can we uh, do something about this you know be ashamed to because this guy he booked himself in today and he booked in his wife and his two children who are new patients he's a he's been a patient for a long time he's finally brought his family along so and the day before he brought them in this is all kicked off and now of course he's not bringing them in 
So, you know, what? how do you react to something like that? What's the best way to deal with it, you know? My, I mean, there, there are, there's it's so many things, aren't there, that you can bring to bear on this. For example, he's ringing out of hours, right? 5.30, I know 5.30 is not 11.30 in the evening, but 5.30 is, is outside our published hours. We don't, we, there's nowhere does it say that we work at 5.30. It, it, and secondly, he wasn't, it wasn't an emergency and he wasn't expecting to, it may be that he was expecting to leave a message on the answer phone. Um, but which wouldn't have made any difference because it states quite clearly in our terms and conditions that you can't cancel an appointment. The idea was that he was going to cancel his wife's appointment but keep his appointment and the two children's appointments. So he just, basically he was just ringing to say that his wife wouldn't be coming in because she, they think she's got tonsillitis. And that in itself is a problem because, you know, we have a pretty clear rule that uh, up to 24 hours before the appointment, uh, we will bear the cost of any cancellation if the appointment can't be filled. But less than 24 hours before the time of the appointment, that changes, that flip-flops completely to the um, patient. The patient then bears the cost of the appointment should we be unable to, of the cancellation, should we be unable to um, uh, rebook the appointment. So what we do is we say to the patients, uh, you know, look, even if you can't come in at that time, providing you come in at some time on the same day. So if you can't get your car started and, and come in for a 10 o'clock appointment, we'll see you at three o'clock in the afternoon, you know, when, when you've had a chance to get the AA out. So we, we work with people even at short notice and we still we don't charge them providing they, they come in the same day. But here's a guy who's already, you know, he's already tripping several alarm bells, isn't he? Because he's ringing out of hours. He's, uh, and he's ringing to cancel an appointment, which uh, I'm gonna have to explain to him, he's, his wife's gonna have to pay for anyway because we can't fill the, we can't rebook at, at such short notice. So I don't, and he's not going to be happy about that, is he? <laughs> this guy was, was doomed from the minute he pressed the first button on his phone. So anyway, he's, uh, you know, so he's, he's, he's knee-jerk response to me. I mean, look at it from my point of view, right? I've got, I'm in the middle of cooking pancakes. I get a phone call from a commercial enterprise who they won't identify themselves and just insist on saying, is that first impressions? Am I talking to Derek? Am I talking to Derek? Is that first impressions? And I'm, I'm a bit of a clam under those circumstances. I don't, uh, I don't give out information to people unless they've identified themselves first. Uh, I'm, if he just rung up and said, hello, you know, it's Fred here. I'm a patient of yours. Is that Derek? Then everything would have been fine. But he didn't, and so it wasn't. So, uh, so anyway, yeah, so he's going to take his entire family elsewhere, although this only really him, because none of the others have ever been in, but, um, so, so, uh, anyway, uh, we got, he got a, I replied to this email saying that the whole, the whole incident was regrettable, and, uh, it seems a shame, it does seem a shame to lose them as a family, but, um, you know, if that's, I mean, my my attitude to these sort of things is, uh, and it's best summed up by the phrase, if it's if it's right for them, then it's right for us. You know, I never try and second guess, or you won't ever catch me begging or pleading or trying to get patients back. Once they've said they're going to leave, then that's it. They're going to leave, uh, and we we uh, will facilitate that leaving to the best of our ability. So I said that, you know, that I'd be happy to cooperate with uh, his new dentist and, and send along any records that they require. So there's a guy who, we had a saying in the European Union of Dentists that you can, you can try and avoid giving offence, but you can't stop anyone taking it. If, if someone wants to take offence, then they will. It doesn't matter what you say, yeah? And I know that our, my receptionist Penny was saying, you know, can we just apologise for this and 
and grovel a bit and get him back as a family. I don't know how a, a sort of a subsequent appointment would go in the surgery, seeing a bloke who, you know, quite frankly, is has, has been sort of has shown himself up to be a bit of a how can I put it uh, over eager, over eager to overreact, yeah, because. Uh, cancelling your entire family's dental appointments at short notice because uh, you know because you can't get someone to confirm who they are even though presumably you knew who you were ringing when you rang them I think it's an overreaction I think he overreacted I think he was cross and probably a bit embarrassed about the whole thing and therefore he's he's reacted in a sort of very man type way which is to just say right I don't need you are, you know, there's plenty of dentists. And there aren't, that's the trouble. I mean, really, there aren't that many very good dentists in this area. Uh, and uh, he's told me that he's going to, because of course he sent up, a, after I'd said it was regrettable and, you know, but I mean, we'd be sorry to lose him. Uh, he sent another email about an hour later saying that, uh, you know, telling me how to run my own business and that saying that in his business that customer service is paramount and you know, all the usual, all the usual, sorry that we fell so far short of uh, his standards and and apparently, uh, you know, not only does have I lost him, I've lost his family and his aunt comes and his uncle and his brother-in-law and his, his granddad and uh, his cousins and his aunts and, uh, you know, and that they'll all be extremely interested to hear about this incident, which I don't think they will, I mean, you know. I don't know whether I would stop going to a dentist just because a cousin of mine complained that he'd, um, the dentist hadn't been polite enough to him and so he'd had to hang up. Anyway, it's not worth, that's the whole point. I mean, these things, these are stupid things, these stupid patients, you know, they, they're a tiny proportion of the total population of patients and yet they cause all the aggro. And he said that, you know, by the end of the week, he said, I will be able to tell you where to send my records. So, so basically what he's saying is, you know, I, I'll, I'll easily be able to find another dentist by the end of the week, which is three days, oh, it's Wednesday isn't it, so two, two days, so Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, he's going to be able to find another dentist and he'll let us know, he'll triumphantly announce who he's gone to see and, uh, and uh, instruct us to send his records to them, which he won't because... Uh, if he'd, if he'd actually taken any notice of what I said, I said that I'd be happy to provide whatever records that the dentist might require. And again, this is another, this is another point at which patients are, you know, they're like, oh yes, you can, you may send my records here. Well, we don't, we don't send records anywhere at the patient's request. We don't, in fact, we don't send records anywhere <laughs> unless the dentist requests it. If the dentist requests it, then we send them the records and, and we don't charge. It's a professional courtesy. We'll send x-rays, we'll send notes, we'll send treatment plans. If uh, people want uh, claim forms filled in for insurance companies, which is the sort of thing that the doctor would charge you to fill in, we don't charge for that. I don't charge for signing passports. Uh, I don't charge, basically I don't charge for anything. The only charge that we make, and it's a statutory charge, is the uh, what I call the search and rescue, the SAR, subject access request, uh, which is uh, for um, you know when the patients want when they want a copy of their records, when they personally want a copy of their own records. And what we do is we output the notes as a PDF file, and we output the X-rays as a DICOM file. And in the same way as the PDF is a sort of a universally recognized file type for the exchange of written or printed material, DICOM is the internationally recognized format for the exchange of x-rays. Because what it does is it preserves all the information about when they were taken, with which machine, uh, on, on what patient, what the patient's number was, etc., what the exposure was, etc. However, most of the, there are very many free DICOM viewers. Uh, Micro DICOM is one. 
<coughs> which I've started recommending to the patients because we always get a phone call. I can't, re I can't open the x-rays. No, that's because they're in the industry standard DICOM format. Now, what the patients want is a JPEG, don't they? Uh, but JPEG is a lossy format, it's a compressed format, and so therefore what you're sending them is not the x-rays, it's a, a compressed version of the x-rays. In other words, it's lost a lot of the detail. So I don't think that's actually uh, fulfilling the requirement to send them their x-rays. They don't want they don't want a compressed representation of their x-rays that might be easier for them to manipulate or you know or might have been photoshopped for all they know they right, so we send them the DICOM file now if you send uh, the patient their notes then you have to assist them to understand them you can't just send them a load of gobbledygook and say oh yeah that's right that's because you can't read them because of a load of internal uh, abbreviations that we use that you know I'm sorry you don't understand them but we do you've got to so far as possible make sure that, that they can understand what you send them and uh, so to that extent what we do is in, in the email that sends them the link to the DICOM file I include also details of the DICOM viewing software the micro DICOM viewer which is free and extremely easy to use. You know, it's just as easy as any um, as any uh, image viewing program. So, so when they ring up and they say, "Look, I'm sorry, my you know, I've double clicked on this DICOM file and it doesn't, you know, I can't open it," then we say, "No, follow the link, download the viewer, and you'll be able to view it." So anyway. Um, this uh, this guy, you know, he's going to send us an e he's going to send us another imperious email on Friday and say send my notes to Mr. So and So. Uh, to which we're going to have to reply. Well, in that case, uh, it's, uh, we can't we can't send your notes to this dentist at your request. We can send them to him at his request, or we can send them to you at your request. In which case, it's ten quid. So uh, you know, I mean, you can imagine again he's going to go. He's going to overreact, isn't he? This guy's an overreactor. He doesn't understand that he can't he can't change an appointment at less than 24 hours notice by using the out of hours emergency line <laughs> and then start and then hang up on us, start insulting us, and then uh, insist that we send his his his, his notes somewhere else. And, you know, and that's why I think, you know, and I, and I had a chat with Penny last night about it. I think this guy is a, he's a loose cannon, you know, he's going to overreact. If he's an overreactor, and he obviously is, then, you know, there's, you don't know that if you do a filling on him and leave a filling high on the bite, that you're not going to end up in the European Court of Human Rights. You know, he's going to be like, I, I can't, you know, you did this filling. It didn't feel right. I went to see another dentist. He told me you'd done it incorrectly and left it too big. I can't believe that I'm getting this sort of service. This is, this is, this is a poor service. My business wouldn't do and couldn't do this. Uh, therefore, I'm going to complain to the GDC. And uh, if they won't give me satisfaction, then I'm going to take it straight to the European Commission, you know? Nobody needs that. Nobody needs that. And nobody needs to have someone lob a hand grenade into the family life at uh, half past five in the evening on pancake day and then sort of continue to, continue to wind you up with emails all evening uh, to the point where you're... Um, you know, you're just waking up early, wondering why people are so either so nasty or so stupid. Anyway, anyway, that's my final bit of advice on something like this: is that once you've, you know, is to is to decide early to let the patient go. You know, let them go. The minute they threaten to walk out, then help them, <laughs> facilitate their departure on good terms you know don't 
and don't be rancorous because the uh, I mean what he wants is me to come up with a five page defense of um, why you know why we did what we did uh, and, and you know because that's it's just gonna feed the troll you know don't feed the trolls I'm gonna I was very polite, I said it was very regrettable, but if he wants to leave, then uh, we'll be sorry to lose him, you know? And that's it. And then he's followed up with an email to which I'm not going to reply, because it's not, it's not really, it doesn't add anything. All it does is threaten to complain to the mayor and the local police. So, and also, you know, you've got to think, does it, does it warrant being put through the complaints procedure? Is it a formal complaint, you know? I mean, it's obviously, it's, it's a complaint to the extent that he's left the practice. So you could argue that it is, you know, it is a complaint. And I think it's worthwhile considering it as a complaint. I'm going to deal, we'll, we'll discuss it as a practice. Whether we could have done things any better, any differently, you know. Um, whether, and, and um, to a certain extent, you're hoist by your own petard, aren't you? Because this guy, if this guy had just got through to an answer phone, none of this would have happened. If we hadn't, if we weren't absolutely brilliant and provided a... Uh, a direct line through to a dentist out of hours, then me and him would have never spoken, and uh, and uh, <clears throat> you know we would have just been on the phone to him this morning saying that unfortunately uh, you know if his wife comes in at some point, well she won't get charged, otherwise she'll get charged, and then he he would have just blown up this morning. So, all right, okay, it's all part of the job, isn't it? It's all part. Of the GDC should understand this. It's all part of the job. This is just routine, part of the job, you know. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye.